everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified of each new video as they come out. Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival. And so today we are going to talk about how to purify water with pool shock. Um, there's a few advantages to using pool shock. And basically what we're talking about here is these little like one pound bags. You can get them in five gallon buckets and stuff. But it, it basically is calcium hypochlorite. You want to get the stuff that's in the 70% range. The stuff I have here is 68%. Uh, you can get 72, 73%, somewhere in there. Let me just say right off the bat, this is not an exact, an exact science. There's essentially two ways to do this. And um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about one way that the EPA recommends. And then uh, I'm going to refer you over to Ethical Preparedness to um, take a look at his video. And I'll link that down below where he shows a more concentrated method. And that is a method that is um, recommended by an Army field manual. So a couple different ways you can get at this. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to take um, and you're going to mix this stuff with some water. Uh, you know, dirty water, whatever, um, and you're going to make a solution. That's going to be kind of like the solution that you draw from to purify the rest of the water. Okay, um, and you know you can do it with a, a weaker solution, and then put more of the solution into the water, which is essentially the method that uh, that this is. Or you could do it like ethical preparedness is where you're making a stronger solution, but you put less in to purify it. So it's, you know, two different ways to skin the cat, really. Um, you're both going to get to the same place, uh, and that is, is that you can purify water. Uh, with, with this, they say uh, that if you're following the EPA's recommendation on the way that they're doing it, it'll, it'll make about 10,000 gallons with one bag of this pool shock. So that's pretty significant. So what I did is, and, and one bag only only costs like five bucks or something like that. I ended up buying a box of 12, so 12 one pound bags for like $43, I think. And I'll put an Amazon link below if you guys want to grab that. Um, that would basically be enough that for me and my family, I could, I could purify water chemically for, you know, the rest of our days. I mean, I, I don't even know how much it would end up being, but it'd be a long time. Um, so what I've done here is I, unfortunately it's cold as <laughs> it's cold outside. And, uh, so all the groundwater is frozen around here and we don't have much of it anyway. So what I've got is I've got some green water, <laughs> food coloring, that will be my solution. And then I have some blue water that will be, you know, the water that I'm purifying to drink. Okay. And then I also have a bucket here, and the bucket will be for pouring back and forth. And then I've also got some measuring spoons and uh, you know measuring cups and stuff like that for measuring out the amounts that we'll need. So the EPA, to get this started off here, the EPA recommends one heaping teaspoon for two gallons of water. Okay. So let me see if I can find this one teaspoon. So that's a teaspoon right there. All right, one heaping teaspoon for two gallons of water. So, like I said, this is not an exact science. I think it's a little easier for breaking it down in the math and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to do one level teaspoon for one gallon of water. Okay, and that's that's going to work out just fine. Um, Okay, and the reason and reason that I'm doing uh, one level teaspoon to one gallon of water instead of one heaping teaspoon to two gallons is because for practicality, it's a little easier to find one gallon containers as opposed to two gallon containers. Um, and it's a little bit stronger, so it's going to be a little bit more effective at killing off uh, any bacteria, germs, whatever the case may be, uh, you know, viruses, protozoa, cysts, you know, cryptosporidium, and whatever. Um, some strains of cryptosporidium show some resistance to uh, chlorine, but uh, for the most part, chlorine is going to take care of pretty much everything you need to as far as making water safe to drink. 
Um, so I'm going to put one teaspoon into one gallon here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it back and forth between the bucket and the container or after I, excuse me, after I mix it into my, my solution that I'm going to drink, I'll, I'll do it back and forth in between the container. That's going to allow the chlorine to evaporate, um, and then I'll probably let it sit a little longer. The EPA recommends that you let it sit for 30 minutes, the solution that you're going to make uh, to drink. You let it sit for 30 minutes to work before you drink it. Um, Chlorine is uh, its an interesting thing, and the way that it works is the longer you sit, let it sit, the better it's going to do at killing everything off. So I'm going to go ahead and let it sit for a couple of hours before I drink it. And um, you especially want to do that, and that's not necessary, okay? 30 minutes is what the EPA recommends. But uh, if you want to be sure that it's all clean, you can let it sit longer, and that's going to do that. That's also going to give that extra... Uh, chlorine time to evaporate because as it sits any open water container or whatever as it sits or as you move it back and forth from container to container the chlorine will evaporate out of it all right because it wants to be in a gaseous state naturally so uh, okay so before we get going there was also some question about um, some people I've, I've seen different people talk about what are the other ingredients inside of here and essentially uh, from what I can find, the other ingredients are mostly calcium uh, carbonate, uh, which is pretty much totally, totally harmless. Uh, there's a couple other things, but they're all inert and they're all not going to harm you at all. So uh, you might see some solid particulate um, kind of show up in the water if you let it sit for a while at the bottom of the container. And it's not harmful. It's not going to hurt you. It's no big deal. Um, you don't have to worry about it. Um, but I just thought I'd throw that out there for everybody. Uh, I will also have uh, the, the links to all the sources that I got this information from uh, down in the, in the description below. It's uh, the epa.gov and tacticalintelligence.net. And then I have a couple other ones from Instructable and Wired. And, I, you know, I've kind of looked around to even a bunch more sites than that, trying to just determine if there's any other ways. And the most popular way that I have found is most people are following the EPA guidelines. Um, and then there is also the tacticalintelligence.net, which basically links back to an Army field manual uh, for the more potent solution. So, anyway, okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to open this up. And we're going to get this going. We're going to go with one level teaspoon. And uh, I should should make a note that anytime you're dealing with chlorine, you need to be very careful. Make sure you wash your hands afterwards. You could even wear gloves and, and gl eyeglasses and stuff if you wanted to because it is a pretty caustic chemical. Um, and smelling and inhaling the gas can be, uh, can be dangerous. So um, what I'm going to do when I'm done is I'm going to store my chlorine... Uh, in one of these plastic containers. Um, you could also store them in mason jars and stuff like that, but I'm going to put you know several bags in, in one of these little containers. And that way there's not a lot of space for the, the fumes to develop. And when I open it, hopefully I'll have less fumes to deal with. If you put it in a big five gallon bucket or something like that, and, and, and there's a lot of air space in there, when you open that air, when you open that lid, the, the fumes can be overwhelming, and anybody who's owned a pool has, you know, probably had to deal with this before, and so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let me find my teaspoon. Actually, let me get this opened. So this container with the green is what we're going to make our solution in. We're taking one teaspoon. scientific method of doing this here, but let me see if I can... Okay, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, especially since I'm um, allowing this to sit a little bit longer, then it's going to be even more effective. Uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, if the water is really cold, then you definitely want to double the time that you let it sit. Uh, because 
uh, it needs longer to work because the water molecules aren't moving as fast and all that kind of stuff. So you need to let it set for at least an hour if the water's really cold and and if it is also really has a lot of high turbidity in it if it's not clear water then you need to do that as well so i think you know that's why i'm just going i'm, I'm going towards two hours uh, to let it sit it's you know because if you're collecting this stuff with a bucket out of open ground water and stuff like that in a survival situation or whatever you're probably not going to have the best quality of water and so i think you know two hours is just a really good safe time uh, to go with okay so we put this into the green uh, into the green mixture here and you know we're just going to want to let that uh, stir around and let it let it you know dissolve and all that kind of stuff and again uh, let it you know isn't that interesting it just changed the uh, color from green to blue <laughs> I didn't actually know it was going to do that. That's pretty cool. Uh, but that's, you know, that's the chlorine reacting with the food coloring and stuff that I put in the water, I guess. <laughs> I like that. That's kind of neat. All right. So, um, we're going to let this dissolve and then uh, we'll be right back. Okay. All right. So, um, we're back and I've got this stuff sealed up just in a uh, you know like in this little it's just a cheap plastic container from Walmart I think it'll probably be fine um, and because you, you don't want to store it in a metal container that's the main thing with chlorine it, it'll corrode and at, react with with metal and stuff but with plastic it should be fine okay so we've got our series or our, our mixture here that makes up our base and it pretty much smells I would say like pool water. <laughs> um, it has a, a pretty strong uh, chlorine smell, but not overpowering. Um, if I was going to compare it to something, I think I'd probably compare it to pool water. Okay, so now how do you, you definitely don't drink the mixture. This is essentially, think of it like bleach, uh, like household bleach, something similar, okay? Um, so you don't want to drink that, it's going to be too strong for you. You want to dilute that down. So, uh, if we take 16 ounces of this solution and pour it into 12.5 gallons of untreated water, then it will purify that. Okay? But let's break that down kind of each stage as we go. Um, if we take eight, eight ounces or one cup of this, it'll treat 6.25 gallons of water. So you could easily round that down to, you know, five gallons of water. Just let it sit, you know, a, a couple hours and you'd be fine. Or pour it back and forth between buckets. So let me say that again. So one cup of this solution, you know, just a, a cup, basically like, like this right here one cup of this, pour it into five gallons of water, and it'll make it safe to drink. So that's pretty cool. Uh, four ounces or a half a cup, like this, uh, will do roughly, you know, three gallons of water, like three and an eighth gallons of water. Two ounces or a quarter cup will treat 1.5 gallons or 5.5 liters. And this, this is, you know, just close. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, and then one ounce or a shot, basically, or two tablespoons. That's what we're going to do here now. Two tablespoons will treat um, three quarters of a gallon or about 2.75 liters. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm just going to take, and you can see kind of some of the, <coughs> some of the uh, inert material in here so that's pretty close to being full let's see if I can get it any fuller there we go that's that's pretty darn close it's not exact but then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna pour that in there and then that will treat this water and make it safe to drink so again, we're going to want to let that sit. My recommendation is two hours, 
Um, EPA basically, you know, 30 minutes. If it's cold water, let it sit an hour. So we're going to let that sit for a little bit. So uh, just a quick note on the solution. Uh, the solution is going to lose potency over time, uh, just like regular household bleach. You know, regular household bleach uh, will only last uh, six months sealed up in its normal container. As you start to use it and open it, open the container and all that kind of stuff, it starts to lose potency. Uh, they say by one year it has lost 20% of its effectiveness. So it doesn't have regular household bleach, doesn't have a long shelf life, and neither does this stuff. So you would have to go back, you know, and, and make this stuff probably on a regular basis. Um, I, I'm going to recommend not keeping the solution probably more than a month or so. Um, just, just because. And if you've got one bag of that stuff, it only took a teaspoon to make it, so it wouldn't be that difficult. You just want you don't want to take the risk that you're that you're not uh, having the effective you know the effect that you want. Um, all right, so I think that's pretty much it. Let me um, let me go ahead and uh, give it some time here, and then we'll finish this up. Okay, so this stuff's been sitting for a little while. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and pour it back and forth between these two containers to aerate it and allow some of that extra chlorine to evaporate off. Okay, with, with this, uh, this water that you're going to drink here, um, you want to go ahead and give it a smell test and see if you smell anything. And right now I barely, can barely just detect anything. And, uh, and I have, this came from well water, so there was no chlorine in it uh, whatsoever. And I can just barely... I mean, it smells like city water. Is kind of what I would, what I would, uh, you know, equate it to, or whatever. Um, so now this water is ready to drink. You know, you can take your take your lid or whatever, and uh, you could put it in your uh, in your refrigerator. Well, if the grid's down, you can't put it in the refrigerator, but you can put it up on your counter or whatever the case may be, and uh, it'll be it'll be ready to go. I'll just give you a real quick taste test on it. Um, See how it tastes. Make sure it's not too overpowering, anything like that. Um, you know, if you and if you get too much, if you make it too stout, it's not that big of a deal. It'll give you the runs. Basically, you might get, you know, your your um, your gut may feel a little tore up or whatever, you know. But it, basically, if you just let your nose be your guide and don't drink anything that smells really strong, you know, of chlorine then you'll be fine. As long as it's just a very faint amount or nothing at all, then you should be good. Yeah. Tastes just like city water. <laughs> I can I can just barely taste the flavor um, you know of the of the chlorine in there. Uh, but it it's not bad at all. Yeah, just a, just a just a hint, you know. Good stuff. So, anyway, that is how you uh, purify, um, you know, dirty water, chlorine water, open you know open ground water, or whatever the case may be, with pool shock. Uh, like I said. I recommend you go over and check out Ethical Preparedness' video. I'll link to his video down below. Definitely subscribe to his channel, too. He's got one of the better channels uh, on YouTube in uh, prepping and stuff like that. He's a good dude. I've talked to him several times, and um, I think you can definitely trust uh, what he's saying. And like I said, he got his information from tacticalintelligence.net. That, in, that site sources an Army field manual, so I'm sure that that recipe is also good. It's basically just a more concentrated solution, and you're going to just put less 
in you know in the water that you that you put in than you do for this mixture. Um, so this will all be printed out at realitysurvival.com, and that way you guys can print it off as a PDF, and you can put it in your emergency binder so you can remember the formulas and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I definitely appreciate it when you guys sub sign up to the email list over at realitysurvival.com. I've been trying to any of the any of the, like the instructional kind of stuff. I've been trying to make sure that I get the posts up fairly soon. That way, you guys can print those off and keep them if you want to. Uh, obviously, if you don't want to, no big deal. Um, but uh, you know, some folks I've, I've had several actually folks who kind of hit me up and said, "Hey, I'd like to be able to print this stuff off. Can you?" put it in a format that makes it easy. And so there's a there's a little icon down at the bottom of each post on my site and it just says PDF. You just click it as PDF. It'll it'll make the page into a PDF. You can save it or print it off, do whatever you want to do. So like I said, I'll also have some links down in the description below from Amazon for uh, you know these different containers and the pool shock and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, for you can use those too if you if you want to. We we appreciate it. Uh, it definitely helps you know to support this channel if you do that. So anyway, guys, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter, and don't forget to live the six P's: proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys.